Greetings, Brantford, and all, all those who are joining us online today. This is Pastor Mark from Brant Naz, Brantford Church of the Nazarene, 347 Fairview Drive. This is our take weekly take a break feature where I take a break from my regular schedule, and typically I would answer questions related to the Christian faith of the Bible. But as I mentioned last week, I'm going to change things up a bit for December. I'm going to talk about the Advent. Advent means coming. It's a Latin word for coming, the language that was used in the Catholic Church for many years where Advent was established. And so it means coming. We anticipate the coming of Jesus, the first coming of Jesus and celebrate his birth. And we have that. So we have the Advent. Typically when a church celebrates Advent, they have an Advent wreath with four colored candles around it and a white candle in the middle called the Christ candle. The four candles around the outside of the, the wreath that are colored, they generally uh, represent hope peace, joy, and love. And last week I talked to us about hope, and this week I want to talk to us about peace. Jesus was talking to his disciples just before he was going to be crucified. They didn't know he was going to be crucified right then, but he was warning them that he's going to be leaving them, and they were becoming anxious about it. And Jesus said to them, Do not be anxious. Peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Do not be anxious. Don't let your hearts be troubled. He also went on to say to them that they, they need, in the same way that they trust in God, they need to trust in him or believe in him. Now, I saw a bumper sticker once that said, no Jesus, no peace. N-O Jesus, N-O peace. And then it went on to say, no Jesus, K-N-O-W Jesus, no peace, K-N-O-W peace. Peace. So that was no Jesus, no peace, no Jesus, no peace. Now that's a cute and pithy kind of saying that maybe some people enjoy, but it actually it's, it's not true because I would hold that you can know peace if you don't know Jesus. Now you might find that kind of strange for a pastor to say something like that, but when Jesus himself said, I, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give as the world gives. There's two kinds of peace that he was talking about there. He was talking about his peace. And he was talking about the world's peace. What's the difference between the two? Why would I say you can have peace without Jesus? Let me describe the difference and let you know where I'm coming from from my line of thought. Where I'm coming from with this is when we say that uh, we have a peace that the world gives to us, the peace that the world gives to us is dependent on our circumstances. As long as things are going smooth and relatively uneventful, we can have generally have relative peace. But as soon as life throws a cur curveball at us, or often when life ball throws a curveball at us, we can start to uh, struggle with emotions and our feelings, with things like anxiety and anger and fear and depression, and any one of a multitude of uh, feelings and emotions. But Jesus said he gives us peace. His peace he left with us. The Bible also tells us in the New Testament that we are not to be anxious about everything, but it says by everything, by prayer and petition, by seeking out God with thanksgiving, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, seek out God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So what does that mean to us? Well, a key part of that is just the peace of God that he gives to us. It's different than the world's peace because, first of all, it transcends all understanding. The peace that God gives to us, it covers more than our mind. It says, well, guard your hearts and your mind. So it guards your mind, but our knowledge, but it guards our hearts. So in other words, it's not just something we know about. It's something we can experience deeper the, down, down within us where we, where we have this. Guard your minds and your hearts in Christ Jesus. So first of all, the peace that Jesus gives to us is a peace that is deep dwelling within us. It's beyond our knowledge even. It transcends all understanding. It can't be just intellectually understood. It must be deep within us, dwelling within our hearts. But second of all, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. It goes deeper than just our knowledge. It goes deep within us that we have it there. So it's different. The Jesus' peace is different than the world's peace because Jesus' peace is beyond our knowledge. We, it's an experiential thing deep within us. But besides it guards our hearts and our minds within us, 
and it guards us in Christ Jesus. It's founded in a person. It's not dependent on the circumstances of the world, but it's dependent on a person, the person of Jesus Christ. And so I would encourage you this coming Christmas, as we enter into this Christmas season and Christmas Day gets closer, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. My, I would encourage you to seek out the peace of God, not just the peace of the world. The peace of the world can let you down. The peace of the world depends on circumstances. But the peace of God is something that he has given us. He will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So this Christmas season, my true, my true prayer and desire for you is during Christmas and throughout 2022 20, and beyond, that you would know the peace of God. And if you would like to know more about that peace of God, I would encourage you to contact me, either private message me through Facebook, or you can email me at Mark, uh, Branton as Mark at gmail.com. That's Branton as Mark, that's all one word, at gmail.com. So either private message me or email me, and I'd be happy to talk to you about the peace of God and having that live in your life this Christmas season. So until next week when we talk about joy, may you be filled with the peace of God as we anticipate the celebration of Jesus' birth. Have a great week.